first of all i would like to apologize because <clears throat> my throat is not perfectly right so my voice not be uh, like uh, as usual as i think anishka knows me very well so you know it's always a pleasure to give a lecture and to share like what we can do for our university and the teachers of this country so if you can see the title of today's faculty development program is the smart designing of organic molecules and how to publish research finding in a reputed journal right so uh, we all are colleague i know we all are teachers so in i would in the beginning i would like to say one thing once we are a teacher the first and most important responsibility of a teacher is to serve his and her country whatever we will deliver whatever we will give that will add to the value of our country and in what way we are contributing that's you know is one of the best and noble profession that is a teaching we nurture the students right and for a teacher the most important thing is there is no end of learning there is always scope to learn and similarly when i started until date still when i i go for any lecture or i look some book or when i visit some library there is always scope for learning so one should not think like he is a master or he he knows everything once like one person think like that he is a master and he knows everything then he and she cannot progress the progress will stop it's always is a learning process for all of us right so and all of you are teachers some people might be working in some good college and some might be in some state college some might be in some different different college doesn't matter the first and important thing we are teacher and everybody is having the same responsibility towards the students in the country and you know when i joined delhi university when i started a research career along with the teaching there was nothing one need to make an efforts to get the things done when you start your research career in the beginning always challenge will be there and tough challenge and once you cross the first challenge establishing and publishing your first your own paper is one of the great challenge that should be your design and your own paper so that is why i choose this topic because you know several people several scientists and teachers sometime they perform the experiment they have a good result but they are unable to publish in the desired and well reputed journal or one can say high impact journal that is always tough task but one need to have a proper approach so that i will discuss after coming to the second part of this talk that is 
how to publish your research finding. So research is always depend upon your basics. Your basics and how you can utilize your basic knowledge of your chemistry. You know, I was I was like same like you people when I started my career and maybe worst because I did my MSc from a very small place that is called Bipin Bihari College, Hasi. Then I moved to IICT where I learned some chemistry. I was enthusiastic to learn the chemistry. I was staying up to late night. When I returned back to Delhi University and joined in 1998, you know, there was no NMR facility. There was only one NMR, with Professor Parmar in the Department of Chemistry, and they used to allow only one NMR sample in a week. Can you imagine with that one sample in a week, you can publish a paper? No. But I did not give up. I looked for another route. Right? So another, like, pay and get it done. So IIT Delhi facility was there, NMR facility and mass facility. So I used IIT Delhi facilities. And three and four times in a week, I used to go along with my sample. And one day I gave, and next day, or maybe next to next day, I used to pick up the spectra. So what I mean to say, when you need to start your career, when you need to establish your lab, in the first few years are very challenging. You need to give everything. And once you establish your paper, well, publishing your paper will become easier. Right. So now you can see how I started my career and how I reach from that place to this today where I am. So now, now you can look here. The start of journey. So when I did postdoc with Ketreski, I learned this benzotriazole chemistry. I learned this benzotriazole chemistry and now you can look here. It is a very simple chemistry. You can look here what we have used. We have used this amine, right? And aldehyde and benzotriazole and Lewis acid. So what happens? They form amine. They generate amine. And if you look, if you remember the basic chemistry, indole and pyrrole, they are electron rich in nature at two position, when three position is blocked. And the close proximity is also very, very important for making the bond. So this is what I have designed. Look here. So this, this you can get easily once you have any X here in nitro, that nitro later on you can reduce. So you can get easily this starting substrate. And with aldehyde, benzotriazole, help for generating imenium. So this imene with ALCL3, you can get this imene, right? And imene, and then the two position of indole, which is electron rich in nature, attacks on imene. So you can get, so this we got selectively. And this, the chemistry we use in the beginning. And you can see here, these all, these all wide variety of molecules and these publications we made in the beginning. But the, always remember, postdoc work, you, you cannot carry for a long time, right? Because once you are establishing a lab, they will say you are continuing your postdoc work or PhD work, right? And then what? I could find something new. This benzotriazole, you can look here, benzotriazole, hydroxybenzotriazole, bisbenzotriazole, 
and retail benzyl triazole we have found new application of this that is we use this benzyl triazole as a ligand for seven coupling reactions suzuki hack oxidative hack sunegashya coupling cn coupling cs coupling and intramolecular cc bond so this is what we come to know something new we got a ligand which nobody knows and it was one of the cheapest ligand because benzotriazole is very cheap and thermally stable one can keep for years and years so one should design the chemistry in such a way so that can be sustainable cost effective and robust so this is what we come we come to know that we have published these three paper three four papers using this ligand and now look here how smartly i have designed the next chemistry so in lab if you look we are using these two building blocks ortho alkyne and aldehyde ortho halo aryl alkynes and that can be easily constructed from respective halides by sunegashya coupling reaction which is well known so first is what something new we gave to this globe that is hydroamination of alkyne so in this area we have published since 2009 onwards we have published at least 25 to 30 papers in hydroamination field so what is this chemistry if you look this chemistry this is what is a hydroxy methyl benzyl triazole we have used as a ligand right i will show you how we have designed this thing and all these useful molecule you can see these all some of the these are present in the natural product and this last one is used as a uh this transistors in transistors organic materials right more important is how we can design and how we come to this look here this is a well known chemistry of anhydrylation of any anhydrocycle when you take any anhydrocycle and aryl halide with copper and palladium you can do cn bond coupling that is also known as buckwald hardwick coupling it was well known and another is this electrophilic cyclization it was well established by yamamoto and larock so if if you have look here this x right in x once you have a lone pair and once you can activate this alkyne and alkyne can be activate easily by a metal or by a electrophile right so and this can easily cyclize and you can get a cyclized ring five member or six member where x may be sulfur selenium oxygen nitrogen right so combining these two chemistry this chemistry and this chemistry now look what we were going through what we have published earlier so based on that what we have designed like look here so this is indole or maybe any anhydrocycle ortho aryl sorry ortho alkynyl halide so what we thought what the ligand which we have developed for cn coupling reaction will help in generating this cn coupling right and we will get first this and in c2 this alkyne will be activated by a metal that is copper and the c2 position will attack here and we will get indolo 12a quinoline which is a very very useful molecule so this is what we have designed and we perform the reaction you can look here we perform the reaction of 3 methyl indole with this bromo alkyne using 5 mole percent copper iodide potassium tetrachloride oxide is always used when you have to do the cn coupling in the ligand l2 is hydroxybenzotriazole that is required 
to make a in between the intermediate that helps in the coupling reaction. So this is what we perform. 110 degree. Several experiment we have performed. And what we got is 3A. But remember, the complete and proper characterization of your compound is very, very essential. There was some possibility of this, which we came to know later on. Right? So actually, you know, the proton spectra, if you look this, th these two, right? Same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens, same mass. How to say whether we have a this or this? It was challenging. My manuscript was ready to submit an organic letter. Then in between, I thought to give more support, let's look the crystal structure. When we look the crystal structure, you look this one. It didn't say we got this one. It says we got its regio isomer. Then the pyrrol series, we develop another series of compound that is a pyrrol. And here also it gave the same result. What we expected, we didn't get. We got it's a regio isomer. And whenever you get something different which you did not expect. And when you completely characterize that product, and when you know how this product is forming, that is how you will get something in new chemistry. So then this crystal structure rule out, this is what we propose, right? This is what we propose, this one, and to get this one. But this is ruled out because crystal doesn't say we got this one. Then this is what the product we got. So we, we thought because there is, is some reports where the C2 annihilation is also known, right? So we thought maybe the reaction is proceeding via first C2 annihilation like this. And then intramolecular cyclization, and which is giving this, right? So, so and, 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 and when you design any chemistry, you need to give a proof for your chemistry. Right. So to prove this second proposed route, we perform a first control experiment. So Indole and 4 bromoanisole using a same standardized reaction condition, we perform the reaction. But it was surprising. We got only CNR related product. Indole and pyrrol, both we got the same. And we did not observe any C2 related product this at C2 position. At C2 position. That was not observed. So this experiment again says the reaction doesn't go via formation of a C2 annihilation. So then only one possibility was left. That's called inception of route C. That is simply via hydroamination, right? So what is that? Now look here, this is very, very important. This opens a new chemistry in presence of halide and all, whatever you have a catalyst and all, that does not give a CN bond. That means CN annihilation doesn't take place. It gives the hydroamination, means attack of NH on alkyne. So that is called a preferential hydroamination or regio and chemoselective reaction. So, so that after ruling out first these two possibilities, we left only 
with third option that is called hydroamination. So hydroamination and followed by the ring closure, ring closure between this and this. So you can see here. This is hydroamination. Then bromo here you have. So that will give you a first is intermolecular hydroamination and second is intramolecular C2 annihilation. Right. To confirm this, we perform again control experiment. We need to confirm this. So we look the whole literature and I could find only one example of hydromination that is by Yoshinari Kondo, right? So for this, look here. We perform a reaction of indole with diphenylacetylene simply. But what we can see, we got a hydrominated product. That supports the reaction proceed via first hydroamination means this attack on this. Without any halide, we perform the reaction and this clearly indicates the formation of this product clearly indicates the reaction hydroamination takes place. And then we look the literature and we could find only one example addition of pyrrol on this by phosphazine super base 24 hour 120 degrees centigrade. This is phosphazine super base that was published in 2004 by Yoshinari Kondo. So this also supports like hydromination is possible in presence of base. But what they use is phosphazine super base. And only one example was there because this study was something different. But we got some support from this. Right. Then we propose this mechanism. Now I will not discuss this mechanism. It's very uh, like, uh, I, I don't think you, it will take some much, so much, much time. Now look here. So after this, McKenna's, we published this paper in Engavante Chemie in 2009. And this whole work I did with my own hand. Some part was done in India and some part I did when I was visiting scientists in Iowa. And I can remember still how many columns I have done for this work. So that I will not discuss here because we don't have time. Now, after that work, we continued this work and to support the mechanism because that was proposed mechanism, we did not confirm. So simply we perform the reaction of an heterocycle with terminal and internal kind. And now here we did not use any copper, only KOH and DMSO. We could observe the formation of E and Z that depend upon time, right? So that clearly indicates the hydromination can take place easily simply with KOH and DMSO. DMSO is used as a high boiling solvent. Later on, I will tell you what is the role also. So now this is a crystal which clearly says, so this with the control of the temperature and time, E and Z both can be selectively observed, right? So this is what we published two paper. One is organic letter, one is in JOC. That is full length of paper. Organic letter means communication. That is novel finding. Then full paper we published in JOC. And then further to support mechanics because that was proposed. And once you have something new, you can always continue that work when you have something new. So what we have confirmed late in this experiment, regioselective preferential nucleophilic addition of n heterocycle onto heroaryl alkyne means even though if you if you don't have a halo at two position, if you have a halo two position, you will get cyclized product. But the thing is that if halo is at four position, it will remain up to hydrominated product. And we did not get any CN annihilation product. When we use alkyne with a TMS, because TMS can be kicked out 
during the reaction when you are using base. So that means it is terminal alkyl, right? And this we further confirm by a crystal. You can see here, hello is intact and you got a hydroaminated product. So this is another organic letter we published to confirm it is a preferential nucleophilic addition of alkyne and anhydrocycle on, onto alkyne rather than CN coupling, right? So then we confirmed the proposed mechanism of 2009 paper in 2012. What we have confirmed, what we have proposed, there are two routes in the 2009. First is the oxidative addition right here. And then hydroamination. There, in that mechanism, we propose two routes. But with these experiments, what we come to know first is a hydroamination. And then this is a ring closer, oxidative addition, and that gives this product. So this is how you can see we started the chemistry in 2009. And then finally, with several experiments, we confirmed the proposed mechanism in 2012. Right. So, and then we extended the same chemistry by putting the nitrogen here. And several nephthyridines we have proposed prepared and further we extended with the bis alkyne dry promo and by using now you can see here you, these compounds which are used for electronics transistors can be synthesized by using this chemistry so we have extended the application of that chemistry now coming back to what we have initially designed initially what we have designed this but the proposed route, we did not get this one. So we changed this one. So we thought maybe first we prepare this compound and then we'll put the Sonagashe coupling reaction. We'll get this. So now once we have alkyne of this, the two position, so this alkyne with iodine can be activated, right? And this will attack here. And this is what you can see here, the mechanism. Once you have alkyne, alkyne, you will get a iodinium intermediate. C2 position being a electron rich in nature that function as a nucleophile will attack on this close proximity cyclic intermediate. And once it will attack here, this will open and you will get this. And with the release of this proton, in proton will be HI. So this, you will get this. And in this, all these reaction, you can see here, Sodium bicarbonate is used. Why sodium bicarbonate is used? Because iodine is there and H positive is there, they form HI. Solution become highly acidic. To neutralize that solution, because once you have very high, highly acidic solution, that will decompose your compound. To neutralize this, sodium bicarbonate is used. That will neutralize the HI, which is formed in excess. So this is further confirmed by the crystal structure, which was in agreement what we got it. And now look here, once you have any hello group, right? Hello group can be easily substituted by a various coupling reaction. This is what most of the industries are doing. So then we did Suzuki. You can put this, uh, any kind of thing in the Heck coupling and alkyne annulation, you can prepare such kind of compound. And then CN coupling, you can put any anhydrocycle. So this is what we have shown. Once you have an iodo handle in your molecule, this can be further utilized for making a library of compound. Right. And now the more important is when you look these two, right? This is what we made through just by hydrocyclization and then su Suzuki. And this is a product we made through the hydroamination. These two are regioisomers. But when you look this methyl group, this methyl and this methyl, if you can look here, this methyl is 
1.98 because of the anisotropic effect of this phenyl ring which is close to that in and this is far away from this there is no anisotropic effect so this is you can see here is 2.88 so so this is 1.98 this is 2.88 right so both are regioisomers, same number of hydrogen, same number of carbon, same number of mass. But the environment of proton is different because of the different ring at different position. So the characterization plays a very important role. Right. So now, what is the interest of this chemistry? What we got it? What we develop. So now see the most important thing is that what I am going to discuss here. Hydroamination of alkyne using DMS or D6. And DMS or D6, when we use what we come to know that incorporation of D deuterium in the molecule. So how it is coming? This is how. DMS or D6 with a base releases a D positive. Potassium trisibutoxide releases this X, D, and D comes here. And again, you know, we have uh, this tersibutanol, a nitrocycle with potassium tersibutanol, Oxide, they will release this X and this potassium tersibutoxide will take this X, it forms tersibutanol. And once you have this, after abstraction of this, and this DMSO will get incorporation of H and what, what is happening? DMSO D is replaced by the H of NH. And it releases the D positive in the solution, which is responsible for giving D into the molecule. So we come to know about something new chemistry like DMS or D6 can be used as a deuterization source for organic molecule. So you can see here this. We got this. And once we have an electron rich system and D positive is there you can get the incorporation D at these two positions also, right? So this is how we got this incorporation of this D. And then you can see hydroamination. We got the D here on vinylic positions, vinylic positions. And once you have a any alkyne having an electron rich ring that can also be deuterated, right? So with this, Something new chemistry has come out and that we have extended and we filed the patent and patent have been granted. This is in commercialization scale. So this is the most valuable outcome of the chemistry, right? So small heterocycles, you can deuterate. Toline. So this toline D3 is used as NMR solvent. And sigma LH, it is five gram is nearly $500. And what we have done? Simply this, using this toline, you can make this, all the H can be replaced, not aromatic, only toline 3, this H can be replaced by D. So you can make a deuterated toline directly by using this chemistry. Metaxylene, orthoxylene, 135 trimethyl, so mistyline, right? And styrene, methyl styrene can be deuterated. So drug molecule can, can be deuterated with this. So what is the best outcome is this. When you use DMSO D6, it can be used as a deuterium source. And when you look any literature, you will see the deuterium compound are so expensive. And this method is 15 
lesser than what is reported. So like this one, you can divide 15 times, much cheaper. So by using this, when we done this chemistry, then we got invitation for account of chemical research. This is a, a very high reputed journal, which invites the people who have made a significant contribution in that field. So because of the hydroemission chemistry, we got this invitation in 2016 and 2017 we published. Now you can see all these papers, they are all in hydroemission chemistry. Some more are there. I have not included here, there's up to 21. So second chemistry, again, is simple and most useful. So what we have designed, instead of halide, we replace with aldehyde. So what we thought, this amine will make imine first, and then this nucleophile can attack because imine is activated. So nucleophile can attack here, and this nitrogen will attack here. So there are two possibilities. Maybe first we can have an attack of this one, right? And or maybe first the nitrogen can attack here, so we can get ring B here. But both eventually will give the final product. Is the same, this one. So by using this, we have published more than 40 papers using the same chemistry. You can see here, some of them I have mentioned here. What I mean to say, you need to think a basic chemistry. Once you think a basic chemistry and you can apply, you can connect, you can perform the experiment, you will get a good paper. But you need to make your efforts. Without efforts, nothing will come out. So see here, one bullet, more than 100 targets. So with using this chemistry, more than 100 scaffolds, we have successfully synthesized. And it's a very simple, like ortho alkanyl aldehyde, you can change amine building block. So these can be very, and these can be very. So you can change the combination. And with the R group, you can have a variation R here, R here, right? And nitros, nitrogen here, and quinoline here, indole ring here, thiophene ring here. So wide variety of scaffold can be constructed amine. And, and second is amine. So now look here. These are several papers using this chemistry. Now look here, what is the simplicity? In the beginning, we have started with this. And diphenylamine, very cheap, easily available in the lab. And silver and iodine is well known to activate this alkyne, any metal, right? So that metal you need to screen when you do the reaction. So how this? First is a imine formation, then attack of this, and then this. So one step, you got these fused benzimidazoles. Look here, all different scaffold. You will find all different. And R is variation can be done easily. So a very large number of scaffold can be synthesized, right? What I mean to say, I mean, just showing you how easily the chemistry established can be utilized. Then next, what we have utilized, this amine with a pyrrole ring as a nucleophile, right? So first, what will happen? Amine, then in situ pyrrole, being electron rich in nature, will attack here and you will get a quinoxylene. Earlier we got uh, this uh, benzimidazoles, fused benzimidazoles. Now here quinoxylis and wide variety of this you can synthesize. And then to confirm which is first. So you can see here with a time dependent reaction, we isolated the intermediate and we check the crystal. We develop the crystal and then we come to know this is what is the first is forming and then this one. So that also confirms the route, how the reaction is going, which is the first attack. And then quinoxylene ring also, we got this one. So 
So sec first is, is, is this ring, right? Is this ring and then attack of this. And then again, same chemistry, but smart thinking and now, benzoxazine, oxazine, isoquinoline, nephtharidines, all can be done. All can be made simply in water. What is changed here is this substrate and this substrate. You can do the variation. Chemistry is same. First is a formation of this imine, right? And then imine will attack here and you can get this one. And look here. All these scaffolds, you can synthesize one, this, 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 all different, all different scaffold. Only the smart thinking is required with a commitment and with a lot of efforts. And then this is a three component reactions. And that all of you know is inamine chemistry. So inamine chemistry, because we are using aldehyde. So what we thought? We can take amine, aldehyde, and ketones. So ketones, amines, and starting aldehyde is there, right? So first it will form an amine, right? And proline is used. So proline is a secondary amine. All of you know the proline secondary amine with ketone forms an inamine. So ketone and proline will react and they will form an inamine and inamine will attack on imine and this will attack here this is how you can synthesize such kind of useful molecule and all these wide variety of scaffold we have synthesized by using this three component reaction and what is the mechanism now look here it is a dual activation of electrophile and nucleophile. So this is a proline. Proline with a ketone will form inamine. Simultaneously, what will happen? You have an aldehyde, amine, it will form imine, right? So now this, this is a ready to be attacked by nucleophile. This is a nucleophile, this is electrophile. So what will happen? This, now you can see here, We have shown two things. Now here, this nitrogen lone pair will attack here. So one can get this ring and this is imenium and imenium is there and this will attack here, this, right? So once this will attack here, what we will get this F and also this can go through path B also. This can directly attack here and then it can attack here. So you can get F. I have shown two route because here we did not isolate an intermediate. That's why both the possibility I have shown here. And then hydrolysis of imine. And that will give you this. So it is a smart use of the basic chemistry. And then we extended this chemistry with a amino acids. With the chiral compound, you can get a stereoselective compound and that we have published in 2016, right? And then look here, by using same chemistry, this, this we published earlier, right? So this, these kind of compounds, this, this actually, if you look, this is a very, very useful, which is required for anti-HIV compound, anti-tumor compound. So, and, and this starting substrate can be easily made from orthalkyne and aldehyde with a diazoester. Diazoester will give you this, this diketones. And diketones, you know, it's very reactive. And once you have a silver, silver will activate this, and then this and this can attack here. And you can easily get such kind of molecule, which are very useful. This we have published in 2012. You can see here, wide variety of molecules. This, 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 all we have made it. And further confirmed by the single cluster. Fine. And this is the mechanism which I have just described to all of you. Now, 
coming to the most recent one. Most recent one is, all of you know as a Henry reaction. Actually, this idea came when I was taking classes for a natural product, where I was teaching for Reserprene. And Reserprene, they were making the indole by uh, this Leems Gruber synthesis. Leems. So in that, they have used the Henry reaction, right? So what I planned, to replace this aldehyde with this and this through Eza Henry. Eza Henry, you know, this CS3 with a base. There is no catalyst simply KOH DMSO. KOH will pull out this HD hydrogen, will generate anion, and anion will attack on this activated CN, right? And DMSO D6 is there. So C negative is there. It will take this proton D. So it will generate this. Now, what still we have uh, this CH2 is highly acidic because of this electron withdrawing nature will generate anion. So this anion is there, right? And here, what potassium is there? So potassium ion will also activate this that we have performed through control experiment. When we use this 18 crown 6, 18 crown 6 is known to capture the K positive, right? When we use 18 crown 6, we did not obtain the product. So potassium is captured. That's why. So K activates this and then it attacks here, right? And this is how later on aromatization, we can get NH2. And getting a NH2 in the ring directly is really challenging. And we have disclosed this thing. And again, you have NH2, NO2 also, that also can be reduced. And the, now, once you have a, this NH2, NH2, lot chemistry can be done. Look, this chemistry, further we have extended. Now look here, these are so many useful natural product and, and uh, this biologically important. So this, if you look this one, anti-tumor, cytosotic, active molecule. But directly, NH2 is difficult. So, we change this just now we made this so what we thought let's use this potassium tertiary butoxide we successfully obtain this product and how because you know this because of this electron withdrawing nature these hydrogens become acidic right so and this is in resonance with this this can be easily formed. And once you have an anion, right? And this is CN is active. So this will attack here. Once this attack here, now you can see yes, CH2 is there. Highly SD hydrogen. So you got this NH2 here. Potassium tertiary butoxide is still present. Right? So potassium tertiary, this is a, I have shown you keto, this is a, a imine and uh, active form, the CH2. So this will give anion that will attack here. And after that, still you have SD hydrogen with the release, you get NH2. And NH2 and CN, very close proximity. So this will attack here. And this is how you can get this product, right? So what I mean to say, what I have shown here in all this, some part of the chemistry, which I started in the beginning, I continued and up to the end, what I have shown here at this paper, we have submitted maybe very soon, this will publish. That's why I'm not showing each and everything. We have a crystal, everything, right? So what I mean to say for your research, you need to design smartly. You need to design in such a way so that you can sustain not only one paper, some so many more papers, right? Now coming to the next part, how to get your research paper published in reputed journals, right? So this is always challenging for all of us, but once you have a result, 
And once see how to decide, they are following things. Identifying a target journal. Following the journal's instruction. Submitting the paper. Understanding the decision process. Revising a paper, answering the query, and reviewing proofs. These are the steps which are required when you have some result and how you can publish these results in top rated journal and good impact factor journal. Now look here, identifying a target journal. After preparing a manuscript, your next step is to the journal for the publication of your research. And there are several criteria that should be considered in accurately selecting a journal for manuscript submission. When the paper writing is finished, means you got some result, right? You, you, you are looking like where to publish, right? When the paper writing is finished and the author consider the paper to be worth public, publishing, the next step is to submit it for publication, right? And where? So this is very important. The selective focus here is on journal article or conference paper. There, there are two kinds of, one is called letters of communication. Letters and communication always publish novel findings. An article is always a full paper where after having preliminary results that is published in letters of communication, after that, you can continue that you can publish a full length paper. Although there, there's no restriction for having a novel paper, novel work you can publish in article. That's full length. That, that also you can do. But it is always there. When you have some novel finding, something cutting edge, something different, which is not known, that you can publish as a communication or as a letter. Letter, they are having a short paper, four page length, something like that. But when you have a full length paper, there's no limit. You can have a 10, 15, 20, 30 pages, right? Like that. So you have to select based on your finding. And always there is a template for your writing a paper. So you need to choose a appropriate template, whether it is for article or whether it is for communication. It is, it's all different. Communication is different, right? Article, it is different. So accordingly, you need to choose a template and accordingly, you have to write the manuscript, title, abstract, introduction, result discussion, conclusion, acknowledgement, reference. All should be in proper order and as per the template font size and which uh, letter, everything. So that according to that. So most important is your abstract and TOC. That should be eye-catching, right? Abstract are independent short text generally not exceeding 10% of the paper length and or 250 words, right? So that should be a eye catching. A good abstract should also generate curiosity or excitement among the audience by making the paper impression upon the target readers. Abstract might be more than plain description of their related paper content, right? Should have powerful statement enhancing the novelty of the research means that, see, when it goes for the review, reviewer first look your abstract. What is written? We do same like that. Just by looking the abstract and conclusion, we come to know whether it is accepting, acceptable or not. Right. And now look here. This is one of the, our paper is raw TOC table of content. Graphical. And see, nowadays, journals, they look a perfect form of the paper. Now look this one. This is second one is refined one. If you look first one, 
there are so many things here ns2 group is there right but ns2 group is intact but now if you have finding here you can show this is primary amine is intact so it is a chemo selective regio selective both so you need to highlight your finding itself in your toc as well as in abstract so what is the conclusion of the paper that should also be conclusion is also very very important unlike the abstract the conclusion in the last part of the main body of paper or thesis it is where a researcher actually answer the big question that impelled him or her to undertake the research project in the first place length and character that should be you know as per the general guideline and and language is also very very important the language should be a simple because because once your paper is published it goes all over the world it's not everywhere people are they are good in english chinese french is not like that so you must write a paper in simple and very polite language cover letter is also very very important once you write the cover letter once you revise the cover letter so your cover letter should you know highlight editor's name journal right editor's name name of the journal and your manuscript title article type whether review is there or whatever is there that you should write and submission date and be background of study so your letter is a very very important which you write to the editor and when you write a revised cover letter means once the paper came for the revision you are writing you need to reply each and every question raised by the referee point by point point by point you need to write the question 1 question 2 question 3 of referee 1 referee 2 right so this need to be addressed properly and match between the subject of your article and journal aim you know it is also very important while choosing the journal in which journal whether it is related to your subject or not right so aim just look the aim and scope and then accordingly you have to decide which journal is more appropriate second criteria what is the readership and targeted audience you have to look like which audience you are targeting and so for that what you can do browse through journal issue and check the countries and authors institution affiliation for right so accordingly you can decide the journal which journal you need to choose the next one is journal visibility which journal is more like visible everywhere and which is more circulating accordingly you need, you need to choose i'll skip this and checklist for the journal selection each and every journal there is a checklist what need to be submitted along with the manuscript that you should look it carefully right and each and everything you have to attach according to the checklist right so and also you need to check like what is the minimum time that journal takes so that you can look through the journals does the subject of your article matches with the journal does the journal accept the article type you intend to submit is the journal read by your target audience does the journal have an online edition online edition is always good because it goes widely everywhere is the journal impact factor in line with your requirement right is the journal regards as prestigious one of the field in your field which is prestigious journal or not how many times a year it journal publish what are the publication charges sometimes you know there are very high publication charges so if you don't have then don't consider that journal consider something else and then general instruction that i have already you know discuss with you what category of 
article does the journal publish? What is the maximum length of article? What is the maximum length of abstract? So these are the question which you should be ready before that. So what section should be article include? What are the guidelines for each? What guidelines should be followed regarding writing style? That is also important, right? And how many figures? Because some paper, some journals, they have a restriction of figure and tables. So that also you need to look at. And in what electronic format should the paper be prepared? So that should be looked at. And then submitting a paper is also very important. Earlier, it used to send through a mail. Just write everything, compile, and then send through the speed post, something like that. Electronic submission is now is very fast, right? A more, nowadays, most of them are electronic, right? So, and the most important thing, there are two things you remember. When you look at the editorial board, when you submit your manuscript, you can also select the editor accordingly. In some journal, they give the name of associate editors. So you can uh, check, you can assign those editors and then those editors will send your manuscript for the reviewer. And when the reviewer submit the comments, the editor in chief of the journal take the decision for whether it should be accepted or rejected. And most important, plagiarism check should be done before submitting the manuscript, right? And now in the last part, when your manuscript come with a decision, you look it properly. And sometimes they reject, but in the rejection, they write something. So you can again address all those questions and you can again submit that paper along with all the answers or experiments suggested by the referee. And when it is sent for a minor revision, major revision, should not take it lightly, should not. You need to address each and every questions raised by the referee as well as editor. And in the cover letter, you need to describe everything in detail. And if required, you need to give a reference. If you don't have some reference must be there for your, your proof or your answer. So that you need to give. And answer all the queries. Highlight the part you added in manuscript with the yellow color. Whatever changes you have made, it should be highlighted. So that once you send the revised manuscript, the editor should know what changes you have made. Once it is accepted, then finally it will come for the reviewing the proof. Sometimes proofs are not perfect. You need to check it very, very carefully because they are editing, people are there. They edit your paper completely. And sometimes they do the mistakes. So you need to look each and every line very, very carefully. Right. So this is these are the some points. I was in very hurry in the at the end. I was very really fast because due to time constraint. So these are the parameters which you need to consider when you write a manuscript. Or what in the beginning I described that you need to look for establishing your lab. Whenever your first part, you start your lab, always there are challenges. But that in the beginning, when you cross, once you cross that hurdle, you are one step ahead. You are on the track, right? So you need to do really hard work for first paper or first project, left-hand side. So thanks everyone. Thank you.